Love Line is meant for an adult audience. Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Oh, oh, now here's Love Line. With R- R- Ricky Rackman, uh, Dr. Drew, and Adam Carolla. Good evening and welcome to the show. That is called Love Line. Five nights a week, live, taking your phone calls at 1 800 Love 191. That's 568 3191. Taking your faxes at 310 854 4455. It's Sunday night, so we always like to keep the calls a little bit loose, talk about basically whatever you want. And tonight is the perfect night to talk about whatever you want, especially because the guests that we're going to uh, be talking to via special satellite phone in just about two minutes, we're going to be talking to the one, the only, Space Ghost, of which I am a huge fan. We're going to talk to Space Ghost in just a second. (laughs) And we're going to give you advice or any suggestions on your love, sex type of relationships. I'm Ricky Racklin with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is a board-certified internist and addiction medicine specialist. He is a real doctor. And uh, is there anything you want to say, or should we just get to calls? Because we got Space Ghost on the Well, I had a quick question regarding Space Ghost to Dr. Drew. From a psychological standpoint, of course. Of course. Uh, You see these guys, these superheroes, you know, the kids watch them, the kids and Ricky, (laughs) by the way. (laughs) No, a lot of people watch Space (laughs) Ghost. Okay, a lot of people watch. Space Ghost. But, all right, forget Space Ghost. Let's just say Superman or Aquaman or whatever. Better than friends. That's these big guys. Mm. Big guys, big bulging biceps, big package in the front of the tights and everything. You think it gives, like, 10-year-old kids a complex? Like watching this, seeing these huge guys, and then they go look in the mirror after they get out of the shower, and these little spindly legs yeah, and, and all something, that. Something to aspire to. It makes them feel <laughs> empowered to be it something does. more. Yeah. It does. I think Adam is thinking of something, and Drew is thinking of something totally No, no, else. no. We're, we're together on this. I, I just mean... I just mean it would seem like a psychological problem for no. the kids. They go, no. you know, and all no, no, they're, no. they're actually, lanky. They no, look no, like kids hell. actually like to identify with things bigger than life, bigger than themselves. That's why young girls attach themselves to rock stars and things. That, that's all part of that. Oh, okay. Syndrome, so. Is that why I like big jugs? <laughs> that's why I try to attach myself to those. One eight hundred love one nine one. We're going to get to the calls tonight. Is a a cornucopia, if you will, and we will tell you why in oh, about yeah. 20 minutes. Uh, we don't first, wanna... What else is happening? First, we're going to talk right. to Space Ghost, because Space Ghost is on the phone right now, and it says line 9, but I don't know how to... Yeah, yeah. Is this line 9? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Do we have Space Ghost on the line right now? Wow, line 9 must have been the ticket, son. <laughs> <laughs> we have Space Ghost on line. Space Ghost was on Love Line about eight months ago, or was couple, it a year ago? ago yeah, okay, course. eight months, a couple years ago. Hi, kids. How are you doing? Two, was it really two years ago? A year and a half ago, something like that, yeah. It took me that long to get invited back? <laughs> For I Pete, thought I was stellar the first time. You, you were. The well, gr- great I'll advice. probably be a blathering idiot. Where are you calling from this time? I'm calling from scenic ghost planet. Visit it. Have you, uh-huh. have, you've still never seen the show, Drew. He, you know, if he doesn't like us, he can fly over and crap on the studio. <laughs> I would never do such a thing. Okay. Now, for people that have never seen Space Ghost Coast to Coast, it's one of the very, very few shows I recommend. Uh, Space Ghost, why don't you tell anybody that hasn't seen the show before? Because there was the old Space Ghost cartoon, but now you've got Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Exactly. I, I am now a talk show host. As opposed to the old days of flying around and basically dealing with intergalactic crime, now I deal with, with uh, people on your planet who have either ascended to the heights of fame or are beginning their descent. From <laughs> well, the heights of fame. it's a natural progression if you think about <laughs> exactly. it. Exactly. We catch them. It's a revolving door, son. We catch them coming and we catch them going. So let's hear some of the guests that you've had on. Uh, let's see. Well, speaking of people who are now at the apex, uh, I would say... Uh, Bob Mr. Denver? Mr. No, 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 no. That would I be, see uh, that on here. Yeah, that would be pretty much on the way out, I would think. <laughs> he was... He's a lovely man. We had a lovely time with Bob Denver. Those awful BGs were by. The BGs? Oh, they were just hideous. Now, we have had Michael Stipe on. Right. Very pleasant. Judy Tenuta, Kevin Meany. Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. I saw the Ramones show. Oh, did you? The Ramones was a great one. That's Peppy. Right. <laughs> them, Rob, them Ramon boys. Hey, hey, ho, ho, whatever it is. What about Diane Parkinson? Oh, yes, the one who got caught playing Plinko. <laughs> she was playing the high-low game with Bob. You, you had Dr. Timothy Leary, it says here. That's a frightening bit of Did you ever see him uh, passing your planet uh, one time or another? <laughs> no, but he was, he was orbiting a couple of Yes, things. indeed. <laughs> well, well, actually, his own little show going on. we've got a question right now for Space Ghost. This is Sam. Oh, now, if I just yeah, hit yeah, this, they'll all stay. This is Sam, 11, from Newport Beach. Sam, you're on Loveline with Space Ghost. Yeah, this is this rules. I'm on radio. Greetings, Citizen Sam. Yeah, I watched Space Ghost like a lot, and I saw the Ramones show, and I saw 
the one with the jerky boys was pretty cool. Thank you. He's all like, I'm going to punch your lights out and stuff like that. Yeah, love those jerky boys. <laughs> And um, they would be space ghosts on the way declining, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, pretty yeah, much on the way out the door. <laughs> okay. And I like watch it like all the time when I'm at my dad's because I don't have like Cartoon Network and um, like I don't have it on my TV in, in Newport Beach and I only I only have it in Pennsylvania and stuff. Bless your heart, son. Uh huh. Do you have a question yeah, for a space ghost, that? Sam? Well, yeah, I want to know uh, what does is Zorak like really like weird like usually. Yeah, you know, it's it's part and parcel of being six feet tall and a mantis and also being able to speak and control emails. I, I saw the one when he when he when he was trying to score <laughs> and it's like and it's like he, he did he that guy it was like a, just a guy instead and exactly. he talked B- baseball and stuff? What what young Sam is speaking about is Zorak uh, was reaching that point in his life, as most young people on your planet, who, who you know, it, it comes time when nature calls and you want to go and meet a member of the opposite sex and or perform certain uh, acts of a nature, which, uh, you know, I can't personally get into because now, I'm a superhero. Now, he's a praying mantis, right? Exactly. So it means he, he has to realize. eat his lover when he's done, right? Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's nothing like that, that consummation process when you are a mantis because Exactly. The female bites your head off. Yeah. Right. Thanks for calling, Sam. Also, do you, are you ever going to, like, have Rancid or anybody, like, on Loveline? No, oh, they're not testing well. <laughs> Aren't they part of the Council of Doom? What? Sam, um, we've had Rancid on Loveline before. I'm sure we'll try times. to probably get him on again. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that rules. Thanks, Sam. Say bye to Space Ghost. Okay, see you, Space Ghost. Bye, bye, Citizen Sam. Okay. <laughs> okay, for people that have just tuned into Loveline that have never heard the show before, they probably heard, God, there's this wild show on Loveline, and Space Ghost is on, and kids calling about, uh, about Zora and Zora and the praying, praying mantis. mantis. Right now, under the age of uh, 15 or so, turn off the radio. Although we have Space Ghost on Loveline, we're going to have him an- answer some different questions. This is Joe from San Jose. Joe, you're on Loveline with Ricky Rackman, Dr. Drew, Adam Carolla, and, of course, Space Ghost. How you doing? How you doing, Space Ghost? Lovely citizen. And you? I'm doing fine, and I'd just like to let you know that I am old enough to know who you are. Aren't you sweet? <laughs> My question is mainly for Drew. But we'll also let Space Ghost answer. Hey, Kevin, that gets me off the hook. Yes. Um, okay, I'll get to the point. Yeah. If I am going down on my girlfriend, um, I have braces, and if I cut her, is that particularly dangerous? That's not good. What do you think, Space Ghost? Oh, man. <laughs> How did I get into this? Now, I, I, Space Ghost, you don the hood. Is that for any particular safety reason when you're with a woman, or is that just for aesthetics? Aspects are performing happy, happy. I, oh, right. gee whiz. I, I also, you. didn't you say you could control the thoughts of evil? You may want to talk to a good <laughs> maxillofacial surgeon son, Joe, about Joe, performing that. Joe, look, I, you're, you're, just be careful. You're not going to cut her. If, if you do... He could. If she grabs him by the ears Look, or something. It's not it's not likely to happen. Just be very careful and if you cut her it's not good. I mean it, it's obviously it's not good. Right. Right? But it, it heals about the way, say if you were to cut your mouth, you know, something like that. It, it's a mucosal surface, you can get infected easily. Be careful, all right? Okay. Joe. All right. Yes. Try to imagine her giving you a hand job with a cheese grater, okay? Bye, Joe. Uh, Thanks for your call. 1 800 Love 191 is the number. Space Ghost is our guest for about another 10 or 15 minutes. Now, for people that have never seen Space Ghost Coast to Coast, when is it on? Oh, well, let's see. Let's find out, shall we? <laughs> it's on the Cartoon Friday, Network. Friday, yes, 8 p.m. your time every Friday on Cartoon Network. And what guests do you have coming up shortly? Well, this week, in fact, we have a world-famous talk show host, uh, the gentleman who just about invented the form, the lovely Joe Franklin. Hmm, okay. Yeah. He was, he's one of those old-time guys. Who would you say would be the worst guest ever? Joe Franklin. No, I'm <laughs> really kidding. No, Joe is delightful. Probably the worst would be the Bee Gees. Now, why was that? They had been at a Howard Stern function and had arrived in a somewhat randy frame of mind. Randy? Grabbing themselves and saying naughty things. Right. Right. But I thought, you... It actually left about 19 seconds of interview, which could be used. <laughs> didn't you say you could control the thought of, thoughts of evil? Me? Yes. Well, no. I see. No, and... you know, I mean, you can't help but think about people in sexy nursing out I, I think the Bee Gees' hair overpowered Space Ghost's powers over the thoughts of evil. Or yeah. lack thereof. Oh, yeah, that's true, too. Let's talk to Claire from Saratoga. Claire, you're on Loveline, and Space Ghost is our guest. Hi. Greetings, Claire. Hi. Um, wait, first of all, my friend wants to say hi to you, okay? 
Who, to me? Yeah. Hi. Wow. Hi. Hello there. Can barely you even do? hear her. You got to speak way up. We can't hear you. Yeah, start shouting into that Magnavox. Hey, Claire. Uh-huh. Uh, we can't hear your friend, so go ahead. What's your problem? Okay. And I... speak up, Claire. I find myself almost talking like Space Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Claire. It is catchy. You're doing a beautiful job, Nikki. <laughs> okay, I have this, like, really, this obsession on this older actor, okay? Which actor? Uh, Devin Sawa. Who's he? Um, he was, like, in Little Giants and Now and Then and Casper. Is, is he the guy that's in the Smuckers ads? <laughs> Uh, no. Is he the one that smiles while the butter's melting into the bread and, uh, and the, the, so. the he, jam? He played on? the he played the father in Casper, right? No, no, no he's he's no, no no he's the old guy from the Petridge Farms commercial. No, he, he's Casper when he like um comes to life. Oh, so he's a kid. Uh-huh. He's, he's a young kid. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's seventeen. Right. Yeah. God, if you're obsessed with an actor, you'd think you'd f- be obsessed with the one that's working. <laughs> or the one that you've known. Well, he was in Casper for four minutes. Has he ever been a guest on Space Ghost? Um, I don't... I would ask Space Ghost that. See, there's the litmus test. <laughs> Nobody. Claire, how long have you had this obsession for? Um, three years. Three, three years since you were 14. Uh, it is... Are you stalking him? <clears throat> no. No. It, it, I'll tell you what, it's very common for people your age to have preoccupations with sort of bigger-than-life images and figures in your environment. It is to have this kind of a preoccupation for the amount of time that you've had. It suggests that something else might be going on. You're, you've been kind of depressed over a lot of that time. Um, a little sometimes. Yeah, so that's sort of a, one of the ways your your mind takes care of that is by obsessing about things and sort of getting you away from feelings. Perhaps um, okay. it, it's not it's not anything dangerous. It's nothing wrong with it, but it's just a sign that you might not be as happy as you could be. And, uh, you know, people your age experience depression in a lot of interesting ways. Sometimes you just experience boredom. Sometimes it's obsession. Sometimes it's acting out, promiscuity, sexual acting out. Sometimes it's experimentation with drugs. Sometimes it's sort of truancy and violence and things like that. Those are all signs in your age, and really you're talking when you're 14 to 17, uh, of depression. So I just worry that maybe something's not, not right in your life right now, and you have to really focus on that, okay? Okay. All right. All right, thank you. Okay, good luck. What about, like, people that are obsessed with Tuesday's guest on Loveline? Who's Tuesday's guest? Like, Dave Navarro. Oh. Like, our producer. <laughs> your wife. My wife. Everybody they're, that I happen to tell who's going to be on Loveline Tuesday. They're just unhappy he with canceled, their life. He canceled, right? I ran into Anthony from the Chili Peppers uh, at this party Saturday night, and I was kind of hoping that we'd get him on. Better than more than David Navarro. Just because your wife's not as much into him. Well, Anne, it's Anne. Anne. All these chicks are like crazy about him. What about you? Are any women that you're like into Space Ghost that you see on TV? You, you know the one I like. Shira, Lord of the Jungle. I like that one in the pantyhose ad. <laughs> Which one? I don't know. I, she's not. She's not one of those named people. But the one that has the lithe, the smooth legs. Right. Seem to go on all the way to Philadelphia. Marvelous looking. Space Ghost, you're old enough to remember Adrian Barbeau, aren't you? Oh, you betcha. I bet you like her. Well, you know, actually, I don't. I like them a little more normal, a little more realistic. I think there's a little bit of plastic. Oh, tell me you wouldn't like to get your grubby space gloves on top of those mounds. What what is more attractive than a woman in all her natural uh, form? I think that is natural, Space Ghost. A big old pair of 600cc Surgitex (laughs) cranked under the skin. I think they're real and you're insulting me now. Oh, no. Of course, Space Ghost, you've been single guy for how long now? Well, 30 years, technically. Is there ever going to be a Mrs. Space Ghost? Oh, I'm sure there will be. Yeah, have you started looking yet? Oh, yes, absolutely. The auditions are being held even as we speak. Okay, right now we're going to go to Cassie, who is calling from Long Beach. Cassie, you're on Loveline, and Space Ghost is our guest. Hi, Space Ghost. Greetings, Cassie. Um, I have a question Mm -hmm. um, for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, My... My friend, and also include, well, first of all, my friend's tongue peels. Your friend's tongue peels. Yes. Ew. Lay off the pizza. Huh. And also, um, our nipples peel, both of us. They're the well, tip the, of them. Okay, that can be normal, but I don't know about the tongue peeling. I've only seen that in Does people. she ever lick your nipples? I can, no. I've only seen that in people, in the actual tongue, the, the surface of the tongue. Mm, yeah, the surface of it, like where your... Um, I've only seen that in people with extremely dry mouths. Oh. Uh, you know, with like old people who are, you know, lying in hospital beds with their mouth open, things like that. Uh, like happen. cotton mouth or something? Not, not, nothing that you would, unless you were dreadfully ill, would be likely to manifest. Uh, so I don't know about the tongue thing, but the other thing is normal, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Right now we're going to go to Jacob, who's calling from Diamond Bar. Jacob, you're on Loveline. Hi. Yeah, I don't have a question for Space Coast. Greetings. <laughs> yeah, I've I'll liked you like, ever fella. since. I liked you ever since I saw you on the end of the mask. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I was wondering, why don't you have any chicks on? Oh, we do. You do? Yeah. Just moments ago, uh, the, the lovely, uh, the lovely uh, Ricky mentioned that we had on Diane Parkinson. We had Judy Tenuta. Many young ladies. Uh, Sandra Bernhardt. Carol Channing. She's a piece of ass. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> shame on you. But I, I did. I, naughty boy. I did notice that Space Ghost refers to the men as citizen whomever, and the women are just young lady. Well. Or whatever. It's not like they can vote or anything, is right, it, Drew? They're not landowners in, in Space Ghost <laughs> Planet. <laughs> did you, uh, we don't have to be PC. <laughs> did you have any questions? Nice show, pencil head. We'll, we'll <laughs> that. Can I Very do? good. Do you have any other questions, Jacob? <laughs> yeah, could, uh, you have Drew Barrymore on? That, ooh, that's a fine idea. And maybe Drew Barrymore. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to get a grease pencil to play Connect the Dots on Drew's tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would. Maybe Drew Barrymore would flash Space Ghost. That would do well. Uh, that you know? over Tinkies out for the Space Ghost? <laughs> that would do wonders for uh, Cartoon oh, they, Network, they, I think. They had Susan Powder on, too. Oh. Uh, so uh, <laughs> That would be that one, that would be on the decline, right? Does that count as a woman? Well, that's a scary bit of business wow. there. <laughs> so when they said, oh, yeah, Susan Powder. Yeah, but when are there going to be chicks on uh, Space Ghost? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so let me just run a couple of the guests by you, and uh, you tell me what you thought about them. For instance, Alice Cooper. Uh, lovely, but not a woman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lee Merriweather. Lovely and a woman. And uh, who else do we have? Lassie. Lassie uh, was, was difficult. Yeah. Showed up kind of crabby. Yeah. And uh, Fran Drescher, did her voice make you want to just rip your hair out? Oh, man, do you know what happened there, anyway? That thing could jackhammer through tungsten. <laughs> you ever want to break into the Federal Reserve, you take Fran Drescher, put her mouth right up against the vault and start tickling. You can right. hey! <laughs> The sound waves would cut right through titanium. Space Ghost, we want to thank you very much for, uh, again, calling us up on Loveline. You boys are just a couple little old pumpkin pies. Exactly. Space just loves you both. And uh, be sure to watch Space Ghost on the Cartoon Network. It's great. You, you guys got to watch it. It's I'm giddy. Show. It's a good show. Are you Dr. Drew or are you just saying it? No, it was Adam, so was... he was just saying it. Oh, all right, then. <laughs> Thanks for calling, Space Ghost. Okay, boy. Thanks, Space. <laughs> Space Ghost on Loveline. I okay, bought it. Now, now let's say about who we got out for the next part of the show. No, I, th I think this show kind of functioned like kryptonite for him for Superman. He kind of, kind of paralyzed him at times. Well, Space Ghost. Yeah, he kind of got. Nah, I don't know. I thought he was on top of his game, Drew. I thought he put you in you know, your place with the pencil head yeah, comment. Let's always remember that. Just remember, Space Ghost called Drew pencil head. Yeah. It's hey. like it's like Aquaman calling you no nuts or something. You know, there's a lot of talk shows on TV. Space Ghost being one of them. One not too dissimilar is a talk show called Night Calls, which is on the Playboy Channel. That's got Julie Ashton and Doria on it, and they're also going to be our guests in about a half an hour. Know the show? Oh, so you do? See, yeah. This kind of sums a lot up right here, don't you? You know Night Calls. I know Space Ghost. That's right. And Bruno's I know neither. everything in between. No, neither of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, we're going to get them on in a little bit. People are just tuning in for the first parts of uh, Space Ghost. Hey, kids, you got to listen to this show, Loveline. You know, Space Ghost was just on it, you know, and maybe they're going to have the Power Rangers next week. Then they tune in, and it's going to be uh, Julie Ashton and Doria speaking about Hummers. I've got some mail to talk about, though, also after the break. So. Okay, stay tuned. we got more Loveline. Loveline. Call Loveline. 1-800-LOVE-191. That's 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Loveline will be right back. Welcome back to Love Line. 1 800 Love 191. That's 568 3191. Fax us at 310 854 4455. I'm Ricky Rackman with Adam Kroll and Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is a real doctor. Call us now. What is your love problem, your sex problem, your relationship problem? Or also being Sunday, we're going to keep the lines open, talk about whatever you want to talk about. We had Space Ghost on, and not too dissimilar from Space Ghost. We are going to bring on Julie Ashton and Doria in just a little bit from the uh, TV show Night Calls. Now, have you seen the show? What? Night Calls. No. I saw Space Ghost. 
Okay. I, I, I know how night calls work. Yeah. They they sit in the studio, they take phone calls on the Playboy channel, and they like answer the questions, provocative questions, and they, they diddle themselves a little bit. I'm well, sure they sounds like love line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except you just can't see it. Right. Uh, I mean they don't they don't they don't go to town on themselves, but they'll like flash a little this and a little really? that and yeah, they kinda A lot like Love Line. It's not a bad mixture because you get this sort of you get this sort of phone sex kind of thing and it's you get to watch. Oh. Yeah. But it's not all that. I mean, it's providing a service. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a tremendous service, but, you know. You wanted to read a letter, Drew. Let's, let's get on with the show first. So oh. Okay, let's talk to uh, Tatiana from Los Angeles. That's a name. She's destined to be a stripper. Tatiana. And stage two, it's Tatiana. Hello, These girls are working hard. From Russia. <laughs> show me appreciate them. <laughs> <laughs> what? Tatiana. Yeah? Hi, how can we help you? Okay, um... I am sleepwalking. You do. You tend to sleepwalk. Yeah, and I do really weird things. Is this something like? New? Like once I got up and I peed in the suitcase. Right. Oh. Right. I want to hear about weird things you do. H- how long have you been sleepwalking for? My cat pees in the suitcase. I um probably maybe three four months. Three or four, and nothing like that ever happened before. No. You ever had anything called night terrors where you wake up and scream or feel yeah. paralyzed? How, how long have you been having those sorts of things? It's just. It's been starting since, like, the beginning of summer. Something happened to you last year? No. Nothing? No. Nobody, hey, nobody. I had a woman that once woke up next to me and screamed. <laughs> you usually wake up and scream. They're, that's, they're, they're not waking up. They're, they're, they're not doing that Coming, in their sleep. It's they're, a moment they're, of... Cl- yeah, they're they, they, sobering up. Yeah, right. they sober up, they look over, and then they scream and run and pee but, in my but, suitcase. But John, it, it, is, it, it can be a sign of various <laughs> things. It can be something that's part of a normal process for some people. It can be a sign of neurologic problems. It can be a sign of psychological, psychiatric distress of some type. It's common after people have been traumatized, particularly in your age group and younger. Any, anything happened to you last few years? Uh, no. You lose anybody important to you? No. No car accidents or anything like that? Hey, Drew, you hear, or you always hear say, people say, don't wake up somebody when they're sleepwalking. Right. It's really like not, not uh, rattling Ricky about the reality of Space Ghost. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> don't, yeah don't, let, don't let Ricky in on the fact that it's an actor playing Space Ghost. Sorry, Ricky. That's, but but, but I, what I want to ask you is, 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 is there any truth to that? I mean, is that dangerous? Uh, the, the real danger is that they might fall. Startle and fall, that sort of thing. Oh, that's yeah. why they don't. Yeah, that's really the. But so you should just let them go on the way, so they you know grab a no. butcher knife out of the kitchen not, drawer. Not I usually after just you. I usually would put a stocking over my head and then just stand in front of them with a the butcher knife and then wake them up. Touch on you not taking any medications. No. And I've tried to kill myself before, okay. so like my so, parents... So, Tatiana, that, that would qualify as psychological problems, uh, right? My parents are, like, afraid that I'll walk out and, you know, walk okay. into traffic but, and stuff. But this, again, what I'm telling you is that this is, this is a sign, another sign, just like having suicidal thoughts. This is another sign that there's something psychiatrically going on. And you need to talk to your doctor about this, okay? okay. Very important. If you've been on medication, it can be, it can be, it can be a seizure phenomenon. There are lots of things associated with this. So check it out, okay? Okay. Right. Oh, and Ricky? Yes? I think you're so fine. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye, Tatiana. I, I, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, say, I, yeah. I kind of knew that it was the ones that are having these terrible feelings. and I mean, uh, I, I, I appreciate the compliment. But I've never had the real sane people call. Not that she's not sane. Well, but it's interesting how she. I can say, look, it has, it's indicative of psychological problems. She goes, no, I'm no. What are you talking about? Well, I tried to kill myself, except for that, and no problem. That's at least and you're the, saying that she likes me means she has a psychological problem. No, she likes you, and there are psychological issues there, and that's <laughs> routine for people who like. <laughs> Which so, is the same call so, as like Ricky. I'm frying on acid. You so, do a good job, Drew. You're saying making a, an attempt on your life is a, is is up there in the psychological problem that, range. That's a sign of psychiatric. Oh, okay. okay, all right. Just want to be clear. Was that? Just want to make sure it was clear. <laughs> Let's talk to Jennifer from Whittier. Jennifer. Yeah. Hi. Hey. Uh, I was wondering, like, okay, like earlier you said uh, that you'd rather have Anthony from Red Hot Chili Peppers than Dave. I think Dave would be way better. No, no, but but the reason that you would rather have Dave Navarro on Love Line is the reason why I'd rather have Anthony here. I'm not I jealous guess. or anything. Huh? I'm not jealous or anything. Okay. Like, just like every chick in the world is like, Dave Navarro is going to be on Love Line. Is your wife going to make some uh, cheap oh, excuse yeah, yeah, and right. come out here again? Oh, it happened to be my birthday and Bush was on Love Line, okay? And she happens to bring cupcakes. If it was my birthday and uh, Space Ghost was on, I wouldn't. Have, I would have got a rocks. I guarantee I'll have cupcakes tomorrow for some stupid reason because Dave Navarro is going to be on Love Line. Thanks for calling, Jennifer. This is Marie from uh, Mountain View. This is a question from Adam. 
Hi there. Um, I was just citizens. Hello. <laughs> yes. Ahead. When guys are all gross and they burp and fart and stuff like that, or they ask you to have a burping contest with them, yeah. Does that mean like they like you? Oh yeah. Something? Oh yeah. Truly? Oh yeah. That yeah. means they dig you. Why? What do the guys say? They go, "How old are you?" I'm 17. You're 17. Yeah. How old are the guys? Um, the same age. Like eight. You got 17-year-old guys going, let's have a burping contest. Yes. And what do you say to them? Well, sometimes I'll agree. And who wins? Sometimes I do. And you have fart contests? No, I've never done that. Oh, yeah, that that would be sort of crazy. Uh, You know, love comes in many, many different shapes and many different smells. And sounds. And that that could be one of them. Are these guys you like? Um, yeah, I like one of them. You know, chances are, if a, if a guy, let me give you a few things. If a guy like challenges you to like a tobacco spitting contest, uh, actually any kind of spitting, uh, watermelon seeds or anything like that, if he's challenged you to contest, he usually, he's probably think of you as a buddy more than, more than a lover, m- most likely. Well, judging on Marie's call, Marie sounds like she's looking for the type of guy that they could sit at home and maybe watch Space Ghost and go to the arcade. <laughs> I barely even know him, and he asked me. I was on the phone with him a while ago. Well, l- let me just say this. Marie, yeah? there's no real answer this, to yes, this question. Yes, there is a real answer. No, there, no, there, cause we don't know there the is guy. an answer. We don't know the guy. Marie. I'll give an answer. Oh, Marie, okay. I, am never, I am never one. I am the last person in the world to ever say, like, grow up, okay? I have been living my life being the most immature idiot in the world, okay? Uh, but when, we'll attest to that. Exactly. Yeah. He idolizes but when you're space seven, ghosts. But when you're 17 years old and you're hanging out with guys that say, hey, let's have a burping contest. That's like eight-year-old stuff. So Find other guys. Okay. But Maybe I like not. him, though. See? And he says, let's have a burping contest? It's somebody for everybody, Ricky. Jeez, I guess so. Marie, don't worry about it, all right? See, okay. We don't know the guy, so we really can't answer it. We know our... We don't, don't know the guy. Contest. We don't know her either. I mean, Actually, maybe if it works, I was trying the wrong things all my life. Eli from Carpinteria. Yeah, how are you guys doing tonight? What's up? Good. What's up? All right. Yeah, I was listening to your guys' show about a week ago, mm-hmm. and this girl called up, and she sounded pretty worried because um, she was dating her first cousin. Right. I remember that. Yeah, and she wanted to, you know, she was making a big deal about incest and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, well, that brought about some curiosity um, for me. And my question is, um, what physical or mental um, abnormalities can be brought about within a child that's given birth? Well, for, they, voice cracks. They, voice cracking, uh, strong belief in space ghosts. Uh, One eye. <laughs> What they usually it, find themselves asking women for spitting and farting contests. Uh-huh. Drew, what do you... Uh, it, it's, it's just the closer the genetic relations, the more genetic abnormalities can be preserved or magnified. Okay? Mm-hmm. So if there are already problems in the gene pool, they can come together and go from, say, being a hidden condition to being a manifest condition. You ever go hang out in that gene pool? No. So, but, so you know, someone was telling me this. If you have a dog that's a hybrid, or I don't know if you call it hybrid, but 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 a, a, a purebred, in, okay, a purebred, they're weaker. That's right. They don't live as long. Right. They're they they're more prone to disease right. and and things like that because they're pure. They don't and, and that's right. that's like a good example of the inbreeding, right? Right. Boy, I'm good. The same guy said he had to, <laughs> had to pull rope out of his dog's butt because it swallowed rope. <laughs> so it's not real smart didn't. either. I didn't. But a friend of mine's dog like ate rope. And he had to, like, pull it out. Yeah. It was kind and of when like... he let it back, did the dog start talking? Like, hi, my name's different. <laughs> yeah, it was like one of those pulling plays. <laughs> Tammy from Hayward, you're on Loveline. Hi. Um, okay, my first question is, what exactly is your sexual peak? That's the top of your penis. <laughs> <laughs> it is? No, it, it, it is the age at which you have the most spontaneous sexual drive. Let's say it that way. Does that make sense to you, Tammy? That, that, your, that the biology is at a peak. When you want it the most, it's the age in which you're, you're horniest, and right, it, Drew? Well, that, that would mean my that, sexual peak is whenever I can't get it. And that, well, that's a little different. But but oh. uh, that would be a, you know 18 to 20 for male. It would be in the early to mid 30s for oh, female. Oh, boulder dash! Well, 18 to 20 for male peak. What is your peak? 
18 to 20 is your peak. 18 to 20 was my starting. So I started I'm, I'm my peak saying, and took a rapid decline well, ever since. saying you not, get any. Right. They're just saying you want some. Right. That, you, that your biological peak, that your ability to tolerate the most and, mm. and to pursue that, the most. That's when your penis is most durable. So to speak. This I love. I thought you guys. But if that was my sexual everything. peak, how come I couldn't last like at all during my sexual? Because peak? there was so much. You wanted it too so much. much. So much uh, uh, hormonal stimulation that it doesn't last. Yeah, we're. We, you know where we are. We are. We are cartwheeling down into the valley of impotence. Right. We're uh, the, the sexual peak was was when we we're like in high school and we're rolling down like like an extreme skiing thing where the guy like clips Yeah, we're his not foot even rolling. We're like the guy off the free cliff, fall. right? Yeah. yeah. We're <laughs> free, free fall. falling into the valley of prostate and inflammation and impotence. So it's a slow climb up but a rapid debacle. It's a fast free fall from a long hard climb, <laughs> Ricky. Yikes. Ben from Monterey Park, you're on Love Line. Yeah, um this is the uh, uh, I was wondering, this is a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah, Ben. Uh, I was wondering, like, what are, like, the effects of, like, LSD? Like, I've done it, like... Well, there's a lot of debate about what the long-term effects of LSD are. Yeah. I, I can tell you as a matter of fact, based on my experience, that people that do a lot of acid have yeah. lots of chronic mood disturbances. There's absolutely no dispute about that. Uh-huh. Whether or not using acid a couple of times is going to cause long-term psychiatric symptoms is not known. I, for a given individual, it might be. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that a larger dose, if you take a big hit of acid, you're likely to have problems. If you take acid before the age of 15, when your brain is still developing, you're likely to have problems. Mm -hmm. There's even a a newly described syndrome called a post-hallucinogenic perceptual disorder where people actually get locked into a a hallucinogenic high for six months to a year. And those people, it's it's not even a high. It's just like a dissociated state, like a dream state. And those people have lots of chronic disturbances of mood. It may affect your memory. It may affect your ability to reason. It may even, uh, on a single episode, create a psychotic illness, uh, uh, as some people talk, call it, going crazy. That becomes is a that recurrent bad? problem. That is bad. Uh-huh. Ben, you do a lot of you do a lot of acid. Yeah, it's not Thank good. You. It's really bad for your the anatomy of your brain, the function of your brain, and like, and psychologically, like I always say, it's it, it it's a mind blank screw because right. you're 30 and you forget your keys and you go, gee, right. I wonder if it's because I tripped out too much. Right, it, and it is. And the thing that bothers well, me the most... It may or may not be, but it's going to screw with you. Well, the, the thing that bothers me the most is that people your age, Ben, are preoccupied with, quote, the bad trip, that somehow... Uh-huh. You know, as long as I don't have a bad trip, I'm oh, going to be okay. I never had a bad trip. Ben, it is the people that have the good trips that get into the most trouble because I, you, like, can, I love it. Like, right, so you keep using it and you end up with long-term. So if they problems. had a bad time, they probably wouldn't do it That's anymore. That's exactly right. And people a lot older than you are the ones that actually begin manifesting a lot of the problems. By the time you're, you may not be your, your friends see you doing a lot of acid, you seem okay. But when you're 30, is when things may really start to go mm-hmm. wrong. Thanks for calling, Ben. Stop the drug. Right now, we're talking to Maria from San Gabriel. Maria, you're on Love Line. Hi, Ricky. Hi, Maria. Hi, Adam. Hi. Um, I don't know if you're, you guys remember me, but I called during the summer, and I told you that I had five fishes that were named after Ricky. All five fishes were named Ricky? Yeah. How'd you tell them apart? I, I don't know. Well, well, Why bother? They're all named Ricky. Didn't matter. That, were they all running thing. into each other? And flo- <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, they were named the Ricky Lake. We're pretty smart. Okay, and? Anyway, um, well, three of them died, and Uh-oh. then I got three more, but the ones I got are, like, really, really, really small, and one's going to die pretty soon. Mm. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't name him Ricky anymore. You know, I just had a thought. Ricky's neck hurts. Now, I'm not saying there's any association. You think they're, vo- you think they're voodoo fish? Well, it would make a kind of a cool Twilight Zone episode, where as the fish died, so did your health deteriorated. I'd be at Maria's house every day giving her the best fish food in the world, the nicest tank. Maria, thank you for your call. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. I'm not done. I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah, Maria. Um, well, it's still about my period. Before I get my period, like, my, for a week, like, my ovaries hurt, like, a lot. That's normal. It is? Yep. It's called dysmenorrhea. Take some uh, Advil or something like that tends to help it. And don't believe in the fish tank anymore. Love line. Call 1 800 Love 191. Love line. We'll be right back! What does that mean, Drew? What? I dig those chicks. The, the Disney, the Disney uh, character. Yeah, I like Belle. And That's normal. Not, and Blue is Ariel was hotter. Yeah. Except she didn't have feet. 
And what about uh, Pocahontas? She had a pretty Wasn't hot body. Wasn't into Pocahontas, man. Wasn't you weren't? No. You don't like the ethnic thing? What? No, I'm, I'm, I'm gall about the ethnic thing. I figure just... she's got a pretty good... Stop she it. Stop it. I just... <laughs> she didn't shave. God, I need a stick for you guys. I like. I need a stick. <laughs> well, I'm just saying oh, she's so out in the woods. I, I, really, I really feel like I should be smacking you guys with some kind of a reed or you something. You can't see that through the little leather thing. You, you see stop, it, stop, it, stop, it, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. And Pocahontas stop had it. some. You know, Belle didn't have some. But you know what the problem with... Uh, Ariel was no smelled like fish. <laughs> <laughs> that was the girl from Little Mermaid. Uh, did you want to read a letter now, Drew? No. Oh, no, not come that. on now! Come on, come on now! On. Hey, this is Keith. I'll, I'll tell you, we got a Keith from... is calling from Reno. Right. Keith, you're on Love Line. Hi there. Hi. What'd you want to say, bro? Hey, uh, I always noticed you guys had this fascination with everybody called in whether uh, their girlfriends took it to butt or not. We did. Yeah. Every time. Oh, uh, that hear... must have been after we were giving our Super Bowl predictions, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyways, I was going to tell you guys and all the women out there and everybody that uh, every, well, actually, that every girl that I've ever known that does it absolutely loves it. Thank you for sharing, Keith. Okay, right now let's go to uh, Tina from Santa Monica. Tina, you're on Loveline. Oh, God, thank you for sharing. Keep coming back. Um, hey, Ricky. Um, what I called about is I do 12-step, and I've been clean for like a year and a half, and I've been recently diagnosed with narcolepsy. Clean from what? And it, what are you clean from? What are you clean from? clean from heroin and cocaine mm-hmm. and um it's kind of a mixed opinion amongst my sponsor and such that uh dextrine makes me not clean i agree is dextrine is, a, is dextrine a diet pill it's an amphetamine yeah because that's speed there option for narcolepsy though? Yeah, there's lots of options for narcolepsy i i would suggest you you take it out i mean what, how is it manifest narcolepsy for people that don't don't know it's this is, really is wild. It's like um is, I, is, is difficulty falling uh, w- with a sleep disorder where you sort of fall into a sleep state n- during the day when you should be awake. Like sometimes you'll just be there and then you just fall asleep. Yeah, right. It, or it, like it, if you're listening it, to this show. There's a lot more. It's a, it's a lot more complex if you really look at it. But, but that's sort of the general general sense of what narcolepsy is. And, you know, you've been on some drugs that can cause a lot of central nervous system, potentially some damage and uh, small strokes and things. Were you slamming drugs? Were you shooting it or... Mm, you name it. Yeah, and so and so people that do that tend to get syndromes of strokes and things. And so this could be part of a larger neurologic syndrome. Was this a neurologist that uh, made your diagnosis? No, it wasn't. I need to get a second uh, you, opinion. You need to see a neurologist, and I would strongly, strongly, strongly urge you to avoid amphetamines as the treatment for narcolepsy. It is a viable treatment. It's a routine treatment. But it's kind I of avoid... archaic, isn't it? No, no, it's done. But listen, you got to understand, if you're an addict, you have a condition reward system that if you trigger it, you will trigger your addiction disease. I'm also a licensed nurse, so it yeah, seems but, kind but, of, like, old to me as far as um, treatment. You know? But, Tina, amphetamine will trigger your reward centers and will get you going back in your addictive disease uh-huh. no matter how strong your program is, okay? Uh-huh. It will do that. Okay. I also, one, one thing I want to appeal to these kids that are out there, you know, that are, like, not really having sex yet, but they'll do things, do drugs that are, like, really sexually stimulating and stuff is like cocaine and and cocaine is sexually stimulating no you can take a hit of rock and they'll you know this the response is kind of almost sexual these kids don't even have a clue that you know sober sex is so much better sober i agree but i wouldn't i had never thought of cocaine as a sexually stimulating drug i found it to be quite the opposite well for some people it is and this is what i'm so much more out there you're only 23 i lied Oh, okay. Um, How old are you really? 30. 35. Right. So you're a liar, yeah. too. Yeah, I am. Well, I had to get on. You're an addict. You could have got on if you were 35. I, mean, I lied first. And, lied and what do you mean? Just because she's an addict means she's addicts a liar? Lie. Addicts lie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, addicts lie. Oh, yeah. Addicts lie. oh so of course. Doctors. Yeah, no, addicts, but addicts, that's how addicts survive. They lie. It's just, oh, gotta, my God. No, Ricky, that's a fact. That's a, What? That's so a, I'm a liar? No. no, addicts in their disease. I'm in recovery. In disease. No, no, oh. recovery, that's... That's the fundamental principle of recovery. Is <laughs> well, becoming you didn't sound too defensive there. <laughs> when you're wrong, I promptly admitted it. You see, right? Exactly. Step ten, right there. But uh, Ricky, you're smart ass. I love it. It's great. Keep it up. You know, and and <clears throat> Drew, you do want to have a bourbon contest? A cornucopia of information. Cornucopia, huh? Cornucopia, but like, please develop more of a sense of humor. I'd love to hear you laugh. I don't think I've ever heard you laugh. Gay go, uh, space ghost maybe laughed ghost. today. Space ghost maybe laughed today. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks. He laughs inside, and you know, isn't that the the best kind of laugh? The inside kind of laughing. I think that's like, yeah. It, isn't that when you just belt something up? Is that the same? Drew, yeah. where's the reward center? By the way, it's the it's a it's a circuit amongst and between the nucleus accumbens, the ventral tegmental area, and the nucleus accumbens. But it, it's, have to know. it's and, in and your the, brain the or it's, in your, it's not in your shorts? It's not in your shorts. Oh, your shorts okay. can, can trigger the reward center. Can you be a dextromethorophan? 
<laughs> I, no. I spent the entire weekend looking for my reward center. I never found it. <laughs> you know what the reward center is? Hmm. It's in the arcade. When you get a lot of tickets out of the skee ball where they have all the prizes, oh, that's the, the reward center. Ah, oh, stuffed animals. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Every, time you, were, every right. time you search, you, were, you trigger the reward system, in fact. Oh, really? Right now, we are going to speak with Gerard from Mission Viejo. Gerard, you are on Loveline. Hey, what's going on, guys? Sup? Um, I got a question. This is to Drew or Ricky. I think Ricky might know about this, too. Uh, recently, I got both my nipples pierced, mm -hmm. and uh, I have two questions about it. Number one is, uh, what's the quickest way so I can get them healed so that I don't have to worry about infection? As Did you have a reputable place pierce your nipple? Uh, electric chair in Huntington. Okay, yeah, yeah. That place is good. Why don't you just call them up and ask what they use? Okay. You, they you typically recommend the... Uh was it Glaxide for the tongue, right? Glaxide for the tongue. And there was a stuff called Super Septic that right. I thought was really good. And a lot of piercing places have that. And I bet Electric Chair does, too. Yeah, they, they told me Betadine for like three to six months. Sure. I, I was just curious if there's anything I can do that might make it quicker than no, that. No, no, you've got you to let it heal. Keep it dry and clean. That's the most important thing of all. Okay, and the second question I have is uh, I noticed, like, since I've got them done, after I have sex with my girlfriend, they get really, like, they get hard and... They're not hurt, like, if I tug on the rings a little bit. Is they, this normal? They don't hurt if you tug on the rings? No, at all. Because they're hard, maybe? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Just as long as they're healing, they're not, they're not, there's not bleeding. There's yeah, not wait till they heal before you do, like, yeah, take do it all easy the on stuff them. on they it. They have to what's called epithelialize. Yeah, but let me say one thing. We're about to go to commercials. When you get a piercing done, make sure you go to a reputable place. If it is a reputable place, then you can ask them any type of questions that you should that well, should fact, arise. I'm surprised he wasn't uh, instructed. He probably was instructed on the aftercare because that's the most critical part about the piercing. Exactly. Other than the fact that somebody who knows what they're doing does it. Uh, we're going to go to some commercials really quick. When we come back, we're going to have Julie Ashton and Doria. They host a show called Night Calls on the Playboy Channel. Stay tuned. we got more Love Live. Love, 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 look, you go ahead. Love line, it will be right. Love line, love, love line, she, love, love, sorry, but we don't have that kind of time. Love line will be right back. Hey, we said that. Yeah, you did. Welcome back to the show that we call Love Line. Call us right now. Right now. Pick up on the call. It's 1 800 Love 191. That's 568 3191. Ricky Rackman with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is a real doctor. During the day, he does doctor stuff. During the night, he talks to sickos like you. Give us a call. Uh, we're going to bring on in just a couple minutes. Ju what, you going to interrupt me? I, just, I sit in here with sickos. Sit in here with sickos, talks to sickos like us, and talks to sickos like you. All right. Going to talk to Julie Ashton and Doria in just a little bit. They host a show called Night Calls, which is on the Playboy channel, which is sort of... <laughs> there's similarities to their show in this show, except their show, you want to look at them. Our show, you're very glad it's on radio. Yes, best best for the airwaves of Dr. radio. Dr. Drew is now going to read a letter. I'm not going to read the letters. I'm just going to summarize. We got a, a letter from someone named Kat, who mom, whose mom just recently died of addictive disease. Mom was 36. She was on Vicodin and, and, and Soma and Codeine. And, uh, you know, people die frequently of addiction. And I'm sorry for Kat this happened. She just wanted us to say hi and to think of her. And, you know, it's it's. I feel bad for you, Kat, but, uh, you know, Try to learn from this. Try to make it a positive thing. I hope Dad's still around and uh, take care of yourself. That's the most important lesson you can learn from this. I'm sorry to say. Another question. Another call we got was from. Uh, excuse me. This is a letter from Cheryl in, in Chicago, who was still having breast milk from one of her breasts two months after an abortion, wow. and that can be normal. She's Maybe worried she's that it's just, what. Maybe she's what? You're going to say something sick about she's it. She's squeezing it a lot. And she's well, squeezing it because there wasn't stimulation to the nipple. It wouldn't keep that's, producing that's milk. That's true. That's actually right. That's Some guys, like, dig that stuff. That, that's actually right. And, uh, and she's concerned that it's... There's, like, I, movies that I'm sure Adam has seen with that yeah. stuff in it. She's concerned that it's oh, yeah. a sign of... A, uh, utter quiet, babes. Quiet. Let me Milky get, um, Where's my read? Where's my read? Stop <laughs> it. Uh, I was concerned that it's a sign of cancer. Well, yeah, it can be, but this obviously is associated with a pregnancy or an overactive gland. Yeah, you can get the pituitary tumors can cause this. Pituitary tumors. I, by the way, am not that. into that. What? Uh, you know, the strange secretions from the females. Milk or in general? Anything. I don't no, want anything to come out of stuff? a woman. Really? She can just, like, spit her gum out, maybe. 
And some dialogue, of course, is nice once in a while. <laughs> Not but, mandatory, though. But but n- other than that, no. I don't need anything. Do you? Are you into that? Well, not the milky thing. What about, I don't know, like... I that. Okay. The gusher? Yeah, the gusher. Sure. You are? I don't care. Okay. If I get it, it, I don't remember. You have to remind me. Okay. Once again, the number is 1-800-LOVE-191. Let's go really quick to this call before we do the uh, ID. Let's talk to uh, Steve from San Jose. Steve. Hi, how's it going? Hey. Um, I was listening to your show the other day, and... Um, Thank you. The doc was talking about, uh, or there was somebody talking about um, masturbation. And That'd the doc, be Adam. Com- pardon? That would be Adam. Well, I was thinking about it. Doc was talking about it. <laughs> I was doing it. Okay. All, right, all right, what's the deal? Well, um, the doc mentioned that, uh, that it can become a problem. Right, if, sure. Um, and and I, never, I think maybe it might be a problem with me. What's happening? Um, well, I, I used to date a lot more than I used to. And um, I masturbate probably, you know, every other day. Every other day? Yeah. I, I, I did that in the hospital <laughs> every other day. But yeah. the, 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 I don't think that's the, the fact that you're... The problem is you're not doing it enough. Right. That's what the problem well, is. Yeah, but he masturbates every other day, and he spends three and a half hours jerking it that day. But it's not, it's not right. that you're preoccupied about that. It's that you're not engaging your life for some reason. And what's that all about? No, I mean, not anymore. I, what? I didn't even really notice it, you know, until you mentioned that, you know, that could kind of be a problem. No, I think it's something else. I you think, think it's it, something else? I think it's for some other reason. I mean, the fact is you're choosing to masturbate over socializing, but it's not that the masturbation is an obsession. Uh-huh. It's that you're not, for whatever other reason, engaging in your life in a meaningful way. Okay. I mean, I don't know, are you depressed? Are you, are you, yeah. Yeah, you're depressed. Well, it's one of those, if you think you have a problem, maybe you have a problem. No, he's depressed. Right. He's depressed. Because so he, hasn't have, he, doesn't have the, he doesn't feel well enough to go out and engage. In, in the, three, three and a half right. times a week does not a chronic masturbator make. Well, I would say it's, it's <laughs> I think Shakespeare said that. It's but he said maketh. Maketh. It's twice in a day, so... Oh, so wait you a minute. just quadrupled your amount of... How much are you jerking know, it, Steve? Know, You're jerking it right now, aren't you? No. no you said... Other. You've no, tripled no. your pro- productivity, Steve. All right, all right. Let's be easy on Steve. Steve, you said it yourself. You're depressed. You're choosing to do this over social interaction. You need to work on it. You need to figure yeah. out what's going on, why you're depressed, work on those things in your well, life. And, and I think that um, maybe I should... See a counselor. Sure. Why, yes. Why suffer in depression? There's, if there's you very think effective you are, treatment go out ahead. There. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. We're going to go to a really quick station ID. When we come back, we are going to bring on Julie Ashton and Doria. They host Night Calls on the Playboy channel. So any of you guys that have got some questions that want a women's point of view, give us a call. Once again, it's 1-800-LOVE-191. That's 1-800-568-3191. This is Love Line. Radio Station. Welcome back to the show that is Loveline. Ricky Rackman, Adam Carolla, and Dr. Drew here taking your calls. And right now joining us is Julie Ashton and Doria from Night Calls. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How you doing? Now, for people that have never seen Night Calls, explain Night Calls. Go ahead. Because, Dory, you're new to the show, right? Yeah. You used yeah. to be another girl on the show. Right. Yes. What happened to her? I think Julie has her tied up at home somewhere. <laughs> oh, right on. <laughs> uh, I know, they kicked no, her I'm ass like... off the show. No, I... I oh, it was sure. one of those things that's better not to speak about? <laughs> yeah, I think so. She got fat and you kicked her off the show? No. Dory <laughs> is better. Uh, okay. No, she was I'll a head case, her. Ricky. Was she really? <laughs> yeah, because Ricky I... Ricky was we, there. We, I, no, I was oh, there. Right. I'm Ricky. I was there I'm in sorry. the morning morning show when she came in. And what was the, the other girl's name? Uh, what was her name, like? Griffin. Griffin. And Griffin. she was just pitching a fit every every three steps. She was just a big pain in the ass. Well, good. We're glad they, <laughs> we're glad they got Dory on there. Yeah. We yeah, love that girl. We love her. Can't we be are. a pain in the ass, huh? <laughs> so tell us about, uh, I was going to say Space Ghost. Oh. <laughs> tell us about oh, Night Calls. Night Calls. It's on uh, Playboy TV. It's a 90 minutes fantasy call-in show. Talk about whatever you want. Like this Erotic. show. Erotic. Yeah. But the difference is. <laughs> that you get to see it. Which you is know, a maybe. good thing about Love Lines that you don't see us. Exactly. So give us but a call. Like, well, somebody would call you guys and say what? Well, you know, we try to do topics and things like that. So for a while, we'll be talking about your favorite fantasies. Um, so all the callers hopefully will have some really hot things that they would like to do. Maybe another segment will have things that they've already done. 
But you don't get yeah. into, like, Bosnia or the greenhouse effect, do you? Well, we try to avoid that. Okay. They as, don't really turn me do on, we. so, you As know. do we. Now, Doria, what is your background? What is my background? Yeah, like what did you do before? He doesn't mean turn around. He just (laughs) I didn't. She gave a look like I'm not dropping my hands. (laughs) That's second break. (laughs) I'm an actress. You're an actress, Uh and what have you? You were in a what was that movie? Don Juan DeMarco or something? Yeah, I was featured in Don Juan DeMarco. Which part were you? I was one of the harem girls. One of the harem yeah. girls. Yeah. Oh. Wanting jo- Johnny Depp's girls. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever get to do Johnny Depp or kind of talk? No, to him, I so? just watched him. But really, <laughs> were you into him? You were, <laughs> you I wanted to. <laughs> he's, a, he's like one of those guys that, like, when chicks dig him, I can understand that. Right. Because I think no, well, I, good think, I think he's a good looking. I think he's a and he's a cool guy. Right. Like, what do you guys think about Dave Navarro? Who? All right. Yes, that's <laughs> right. On line every night. We like that's that. Right, right. Now let me. Let me oh, I like your sort of litmus test, Julie. What do you think of Ron Jeremy? <laughs> Julie, you do, you I'm do, sorry. You Ron do, Jeremy's a very good friend of mine. Yeah. So. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Really. And he's he a lot like Ron. Dave Navarro. And you, you do pornos, right? Uh, yeah, oh, I'm do. sorry, adult films. No, you do adult right. films. Yeah, I and do. you used to be a school teacher. Yes. Because for people that have never seen what you look, you look like you could be a school teacher. Uh, well, no, you don't. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. In a you Van have, a, you have an innocent, very, you're very <laughs> attractive. Gone looking, naughty. <laughs> but I never had a school teacher that looked like you. Ever. Well, you know, I had a high attendance. <laughs> I'll bet you did. What did you teach? <laughs> I taught junior high Spanish. That's. Oh yeah, that is. You know, she got an apple every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe two or three. <laughs> I, I actually um, was at a show in Vegas, and uh, some people were talking to me who um, they're friends of people that were in my class because they're just now the age where they're starting to watch adult films, and uh, they're like, "Yeah, she was my teacher." <laughs> no way. What school was this at? It was in Colorado. In Colorado, because we have a lot of listeners yeah. in Colorado. We're on yeah. in Colorado. Oh yeah. 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 So I'm which in Fort Collins. Huh? I didn't tell you the school. It you was don't in Fort Collins. <laughs> no. so you also, so do, you, do you still te- give Spanish lessons and stuff? No, I don't. I that was. What I'm, is? I'm a lot older than I look, so that was. How old are you? Ago. I'm 27. How, what does tocar la coronet mean? Okay, say it again. Tocar la coronet. Touch the. Oh, Trump Trump touch. What? 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 Touch. Oh, I thought it was play my horn. <laughs> so it's touch my horn? Yeah. Touch. Oh, I kind of like that a little bit better. Let's go to Julian right now, who's calling from Norco. <laughs> touch my horn. <laughs> Julian, you're on Loveline. Hey, Ricky. I just got a question for Julie Ashton. Okay. Uh, are you the same one in the commercial with PJ Sparks on, like, the Spice? Uh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Ricky, I'd love to be in your spot right now. Why? What does she, what, <laughs> what, what she, what she do in it, Julian? Oh. Uh, I don't think I can say that on... Oh, please say it. Uh, bits. She what? Somewhat. Uh, how do I put it? Fellatio? To a guy? No. no kind of lingo. To a girl? PJ Sparks yeah, is I'm a girl. Playing, yeah, I'm playing with PJ Sparks. Oh, you are. Yeah. yeah. So do you prefer men or women? Um, I would have to say that it's about the same for me. Really? Yeah. It's the situation. The absolute best is of one of each. <laughs> what about you, Doria? Same. I feel the same way. I mean, oh man! <laughs> one, one of each would be the best. Yeah. Wow. Really? Depends on what mood I'm in. Yeah. Sometimes I like women. Sometimes I like men. Sometimes I like both. Just depends on what mood. Do you do films too? No. I'm would you not, do films? Not those kind, but I mean, I think it's exciting. Right. You never know. <laughs> Julie could convince me very easily. I mean, she's pretty hot. Show, because I don't know if you knew it, me and Adam just started a film company. Yeah. Oh, I can't it's called, uh, yeah, it's called uh, Parking Lot Productions. We, <laughs> we go out around back to my van, and uh, I got a 40-power little Klieg right. light that plugs into a cigarette lighter. And, uh, we don't have a camera yet. <laughs> <laughs> We're basically... High it's a, it's like, a, like an improv Real thing. Nice. We're going to go to some calls right now. Let's talk to Ryan. Ryan is 15 years old, and he's calling from San Jose. Ryan, you're on with Julie Ashton and Doria. Hey. Hi, Ryan. Hello. Hey, I've been going out with this chick for a few months now, and, like, no matter what I tell her, she, like, always thinks she's hella ugly, even if I say she's real fine. And I want to know if you guys can, like, tell me something that I could, like, tell her or do to her that, like, makes her think she's more fine. Just, like, she thinks she's, like, dog ugly. Just keep telling her that she's beautiful, she's hot, you know, pay a lot well, of attention to her. Well, I've been doing that for the past few months. You, and, and also, I think that people in that situation there's i don't think there's anything that you could say that'll make her change the way she feels about herself that's something that's in her so what you need to do 
I would say is it's more the way you treat her. And if you're out with her and you're staring at other babes, that's not going to help. <laughs> yeah, right. You know? Yeah, just so pay special The way you att- act more than what you say. Yeah, it's pay like attention to she, her. she has a low self-image. It's like women. some women think they're fat when they're 105 pounds and they're constantly <laughs> right. dieting no matter what. They just right. look in the mirror. That's they see true. fat. She looks in the mirror. She sees homely. There's not a whole lot you can say to her. But, yeah, but Julie's right. Just treat her. Yeah. That way, and hopefully she'll feel it eventually, but it is more in her court. Dude, it's so much better than being with an ugly girl that thinks she's fine. <laughs> okay, Ryan? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thanks for your call. Right now, let's speak to Josh, who's calling from Gustine. Josh, where's Gustine? By Turlock. Oh, oh Turlock. It down. We the love Turlock. Of the world. Gustine is what? The cow tipping capital of the world. Have you ever cow tipped? <laughs> yes, I have. See, people tell oh, me I that it's that not true. Oh, it's true, Ricky. Have you ever cow tipped? The... No, it hurts the cow. <laughs> you, so are you a vegetarian? Means you don't want to, huh? Are you a vegetarian? No, but I don't kill myself. <laughs> but you'll eat a hamburger. Uh-huh. Right. But you don't want to tip one over. No. But it's okay to slice their heads off and... I don't slice <laughs> their heads off. Okay. What's up, Josh? Um, okay, here's the deal. My wife wants to have breast implants. I... To, she's perfect to me, but she wants them. She thinks... She has it in her mind that sex will be better. She thinks it'll make her look more beautiful. And I can't convince her not to do it. But if she wants to do it, I can't really stop her, I guess. Why don't you want her to get them? She's perfect to me. She's. I wouldn't change anything about her. She's just perfect. But she thinks she's too small. She thinks it'll make sex better. And I just... But how's it going to make sex better? I, I mean, know. only if you were more excited, right? I guess that's what she thinks. Because in, in my past relationships, I've had girls very large. And- All right. There's your mistake, uh, yeah. Josh. It's the same way Ricky and I always talk right. about women. Don't tell your boyfriend you're with uh, the, the guy who was hung like a black rhino <laughs> before he came with you. Men, don't tell. Really size doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Don't know who Dave Navarro is. Size doesn't matter. They will be joining us for the following month. Speak Spanish. Now, what do you girls think about this? Because I, I got my own take on Josh. Let's hear what the girl's point of view is, and then, then I'll put in my two cents. I mean, for me, if I want to get plastic surgery done, if it's going to make me feel better, then I'll do it. But I'm not going to do it because, you know, a man's going to say, you know, do it because the sex will be better. And it's, it's in the subconscious mind. You know, that's what, how she feels. What do you but think? If, um, I agree with Daria. And also, um, sex might not be better because there's a chance that she'll lose a lot of feeling in her nipples. And, right. you know, that's a bummer. You guys have Total feeling? Bummer. Women have feeling in their nipples, too? <laughs> I know. Shocking. Well, Sensational feeling. Maybe she <laughs> Maybe she titty down. hard on. So you're saying it's important to take the top off before sex. Yeah. I know. Okay. All you right. guys are so fondling. Oh, let me write that down. <laughs> hey, Josh. Yeah. Here's my take on it. You ready to hear this? Yeah. My take on it is you love your wife the way she is. You think she's sexy, but you're scared that if she gets bigger breasts, that more guys are going to be looking at her and you're going to be gonna bugged walk. out because all <laughs> these no, guys. No. no, yeah, yeah, yeah. All these guys are going to be checking out your wife. They do that now. And they'll be checking out more if she's got jugs. Well, no, I don't worry about that. If she wants to get them, why aren't you going to support her of that? If she really wants it, if she's going to, she feels that she's going to look better with it and feel better about herself. Well, because mostly of everything that's been going on in the news, and Dr. Drew can help me out, I guess, on this, with mm-hmm. all the silicone and stuff. I believe they, they, they don't they use saline nothing now. They have saline now. All right, Josh, so what, what's your concern? They don't use silicone now. Well, I don't Well, I don't really know anything about You're that. You're just worried. Are you worried, just that there might be some other manifestation down the line? That, that's, yeah. yeah, that's my... Yeah, she's going to want a nose job and then No, 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 no,
And I and you know what I kind of because I mean you girls I'm sh- I'm sure that uh, you girls have seen some pretty messed up ones like their oh, heart is wrong. There's always they're pointing to the sides surgery, and stuff. I, mean, you know, um, I have them. I do too. You know, so. I got okay, too. so do I. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's, let's, you let's have the jump. pump. Do you have the pump? What? <laughs> the pump. <laughs> it's more like the hydraulic lift. <laughs> you want to let Josh go? Josh, it's a win-win. That's all I'm saying. Either and, you get your way, or your wife has big jugs. Okay. Either jo- way, you win. And Josh, I, I just want to say something. I, I just had them done in August, and let me tell you, they feel great. And I've had no complaints from myself or from any man that I've been with. And you can still breastfeed with them. So that's good. A lot, a lot of women have it done. <laughs> that's all right, good. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> good night. Right now, let's go to Mike, who's gone from past. It. Whoops, no, Mike. Hello. Um, he sounded like Space Ghost. He did, didn't he? <laughs> Hello, citizen. <laughs> oh, no. Um, actually, I have a question about OCD. Yeah. Go I ahead. Guess this, this is more for um, Drew. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm taking Luvox right now. Right. 300 mils a day. It's a lot. Yeah, um, but I'm really spacey a lot of the time. And it's like. Well, all right. We're, we're talking about obsessive compulsive disorder. And yeah. Luvox is sort of the new kid on the block antidepressant that's, that's useful for obsessive compulsive disorder. Had you been on Prozac and, and Afrinil and all the other stuff? Uh, no. Okay. That, um, Is there a psychiatrist treating you? Yeah, I do. Um, but he, he wanted me to do um, Luvox first. Okay. But but is there any way to like you know like tone down the the um, the spaciness? Yeah. You have to reduce the dose. That's it. That's about it. Some of it goes away with time. Did he start you on a low dose and build up slowly? Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, um, you know, I'm sleeping. A heck of a lot right, of the day. I think you're just on too much Luvox. You got you to talk to your doctor about that. Okay. It, did it, did it work? Yeah, it's it's helping a lot. But Good. when I went when I went down, it like the OCD got a heck of a lot worse. Just just so so people understand how how this disease works. How did it manifest with you? How, what, what's that? Well, how what were the manifestations for you? Um, the OCD. I'd rather not say. Okay. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, I just is it just? Yeah, I'll tell you. Uh, is it a behavior or, or obsessive thoughts? Uh, obsessive thoughts, definitely. Yeah. Interestingly, a, a lot of people with obsess, OCD obsess about their genitals and pain in their genitals and things like that. Is that the kind of stuff? Well, if your balls hurt, your balls are going to hurt, Drew. <laughs> is that the kind of thing? <laughs> You'd be obsessing about, about it, <laughs> or, or is it something more, more what, sort what? of? Is, was it something like that, or was it something more disturbing? It was more disturbing yeah, to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm glad it's working. Um, can I say something to Ricky? Yeah. Hey, Ricky. Um, Pocahontas was the best animated character. The finest one they've ever made so far. Mike. Yeah. Compared to like, do you see Little Mermaid? Yeah. Hallelujah. Dude, what about Jessica Rabbit? Well, Ooh, Jessica. That's she had, true. She had, and hers were not real. I'll tell you that right now. Okay. <laughs> Her entire body, right? I still say Ariel was the smokingest Disney chick. <laughs> right, thanks a lot. But like I said, she smells like fish. This is uh, Marshall from Hi- Hayward. Marshall, you're on Love Line with Julie Ashton and Doria. Yeah, I would just wanted to ask Julie Ashton. Um, Yes or no, does penis size really matter? Got a small one, do you, Marshall? No. (laughs) I don't think it does. I really don't. I've been with a lot of men of all sizes, and um, it's what you do with it. It's how you work it. That's (laughs) right. Well, what if they both do something with it equally well? Then what do you go with? Magic wand makes my penis grow. (laughs) (laughs) Um... Okay, they're both equally as good, and one's small and one's large. Oh, large. All right, so the truth. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I got to say, the women are very diplomatic about this whole thing. They really are. You rarely hear them jump on the large bandwagon. They always take their time. They always appear to think it over, and then they say, "Mm, I guess large. Well, you know, I would rather have sex for a long period of time with someone with a smaller That's penis true. and then right. maybe have a so in other words, long and fast <laughs> a small <laughs> penis for a short period of time no, is not sm- good well yeah it's not that it's not good but a large penis for a long period of time can be painful oh no kidding but pain, <laughs> pain is good though isn't it julie some pain is good right <laughs> So what, what, what kind of stuff you're into since we're on that subject? And Doria's saying pain is good, and she. Like, <laughs> were you like kinky Spanish teacher? Uh, yeah, I'm really? pretty kinky. Like what? Like what's the wildest stuff? Um, I like it pretty rough. I like bondage. I like. Now, Drew may, thinks that means you were abused when you were a child. No, not at all. No? Not at all. I no, was. I, I was. This. Um, actually, it might have something to do with it as a child because I was never even spanked as a child, and so maybe I missed it. 
Because now I like to be spanked. I wasn't. I like to be spanked. (laughs) I was spanked all the time. (laughs) Uh, I like spanking. That's fun. You you like a little hair pulling, too, do you? Yes, I do. A little dirty talk, do you? Mm -hmm. Very much. A little uh, taking your credit cards and going past that limit. <laughs> I'm gonna get a little. I'm not gonna confess to that. Having sex with your friends and eating all your food, a little of that, crashing your car, huh? <laughs> sodomizing your your pet, a little of that. Yeah. Oh man! No. Oh, okay. Tracy from San Francisco, you're on Love Line with Julie Ashton and Doria. Hi, Tracy. Hi. We should have kept Space Ghost on with Julie and Doria. What do you think? <coughs> hey, Tracy. Hi. Um, I have kind of a silly question, but you guys had Oasis on the show, right? Right. Yeah. Oh, and that band was a hoot. Oh, okay. Well, see, I'm, like, in love with the singer, Liam. And um, I, I'm i going to go to one of their concerts when they come to town. And um, I'm planning on throwing, like, underwear at them that has that says, I love you, Liam, call me, and then my phone number. Right. To see if he calls me. What kind of underwear do you think I should throw? If it's a guy's in Oasis, I would think men's boxer shorts. <laughs> really? Oh, sure. No Calvin <laughs> Klein's, really huh? <laughs> I, uh, in With s- poop stains <laughs> on them. <laughs> <laughs> In '79, I shot a pair of briefs at the village. People still no call. I don't. I don't know if the if the area code got smeared or what. But I saw the Playboy Channel with you, Julie, doing one of those uh, women under hot lights retrospectives. You know, uh-huh. let's talk to the women of adult movies. Yep. You were signing your underwear and selling them to people, wasn't that you? <laughs> that was me. So somebody uh, like someone you like auction off the underwear you wore in a you sex scene or something, yeah, right? Yeah. All people... right. Forget about that. How much for the ones? you're wearing right now he's not wearing any oh. how much for jeans <laughs> <laughs> and your shoes but no this guy um i sent him a pair of panties and he sent them back and told me that was i crazy i hadn't worn them enough so, yeah. <laughs> you know what he did? They take them and they make soup That's out of them. Exactly what he said. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. That's exactly what he said. Soup. Mm. Oops. Mm. Like, yeah. Hey, Uh-oh. you'll be getting them next <laughs> week. <laughs> well, where the hell are they, damn it? Then they save enough for leftovers or what? <laughs> We're going to go to commercials. We'll be back with Julie Ashton and Dory from Night Calls. I am telling you guys, okay, these girls, what Julie and Doria were saying during the break, whatever you guys think you are at strip bars, these girls are a jillion time worse. We have Julie Ashton and Doria from Night Calls. I'm telling you guys, oh, yeah, guys are such pigs at strip bars, supposedly. Of course, I never go to strip bars. Yeah, right. But, uh, <laughs> shush, Doria, shush, Doria. but uh, Julie Ashton, you know, they were in Vegas for this, like, porn convention that Adam happened to be at. Yeah, I didn't see you there, Julie. Were you, were you, were you Adam was in the back the... row jacking it. <laughs> no, I was at the VCA booth at the adult side. Oh, you're on the adult side. Yeah, well, I, was, yeah. I was in the kitty section. <laughs> <laughs> I was in There's your big problem. Listen to this. Big pants He's going to buy some apples balls. to give you, Julie. Well, listen, <laughs> uh, so I, um, I, I'm asking Julie. I'm like, oh, I'm so bad in Vegas. I lose all my money gambling, blah, blah, blah. And Julie's like, I lost all my money in the strip bars. And I'm like, <laughs> really? And I'm like, and, and what were you saying? Well, it was great because... Um, they like the girls because then all the guys watch and that gets them more business. So yeah. they get really touchy with the girls instead of the guys. And so the girls are like, well, do you want the looking dance or the touching dance? <laughs> the what? Licking? Looking. Looking. Oh, looking and touching. Do you want to just look or do you want to touch? <laughs> I was with like four other girls and we're like, um, touch please. And so they were just... We were there for like six hours. You got the man. <laughs> Forget now, gambling. There, strip bars is where it's at. These girls to touch you. Yeah. Oh my. You guys God. love to watch it. They love to watch two women together. No, Any of you? Oh no. Even the doctor here. No. Is, is that your secret fantasy? Two women together. Oh, do tell. I would stab. Do my, tell. Would... Don't be quiet on us now. Yeah. He's laughing over here. His I, mom would, is I have him laughing. <laughs> would stab every one of my cats in the heart. Okay, how's that? One eight hundred love one nine one. Just kidding. But you know, Sherry's getting really mad. Oh, not the kitty cat. That's what's cool about our show, though, is because 
we can talk about things like that. And also, I mean, the, we have no rules, so you might get to see some things. So, guys, yeah, Julie, and I might, Julie and I might uh, go a little crazy with each other. Yeah. Really? She's so, looking pretty good to me so, right now. So guys <laughs> call up and they say, hey, I want you girls to start doing each other on the air. And you do that? Or well, do they ask, like, you know, I need to have a fantasy about girls now, do the, each other? Well, they'll just have to tune in and watch. You know, it depends on how we feel. We're not going <laughs> to give it all away. Obviously, some guy just calls up and says, do each other. Oh, well, okay. No, I mean... But, they would have to say what? Well, you know, we want. They'd have to ask nicely. We want to no. do each other. <laughs> Please do each other. You know, we want to be turned on. The whole point of night calls is erotic television, sexual you know? and fantasies. So we want to be turned on. We want the viewers to be turned on. Now, do you ever? It's get... ninety minutes live on Playboy TV. <laughs> you, ever get, you ever get this call, uh, Julie? This is your dad. Button your damn shirt. Come on, for Christ's sake! What are you doing? <laughs> or what is Tocar la Coroneta? <laughs> <laughs> right now, we're going to talk to uh, Ra Ra from Lantham, Maryland. Is All that right. Maryland? Sounds what is MD? Good. I know I'm so yeah. bad. Maryland. Ra Ra. Yeah. Hi. It's Lanham. Oh, Lanham. H A M. So? Um, yeah, I had a question. There's supposed to be an average size for how big a guy is, but I was wondering uh, is there an average size for how big a girl's chest is supposed to be? This. Huh? Oh, that doesn't translate on radio. Yeah, I, I, True. I, yeah, is it it's sort of based on how big they are, isn't it? I mean, how big the woman is, right? Drew's uh, nodding like yeah, a seal I, I over here. I don't know of any data about about that. I mean, I imagine brazier companies like, probably have all that kind of data. I, I gotta I believe it's the average woman. woman. We should ask these girls. They've been with more chicks than we have all put together. <laughs> I think they're getting smaller, don't you? Are Just they? like the little I mean, toe is starting to. I mean, look at to... all this stuff, like. The women that were popular in the '40s and stuff. I mean, oh yeah, they were bigger and they were and, now, and they were bigger hips then. Yeah, and I mean, I just it's, think. So you think small, that, but then you know you can go out and buy them, of course, I, if you I, want to. So you think <laughs> you say that waif, uh, waif thing is sort of catching up to the chest too? I mean, yeah, but the, the, that they're not like Jane Mansfield, yeah, and no. more buxom yeah, and hippie and all nowadays. that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. more flat chest. Yeah, I, I, I would I would think a B cup <clears throat> would be about average. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Thanks for calling, Ra Ra. Thanks. Right now, let's go to Karen from Woodridge. Uh, Karen? Hi, how are you? Hi. Hi. Hey, Karen. I had a very strange sexual experience, cool. and I was wondering if any of y'all had had the same experience, and maybe you can explain. I bet Julie you. has. <laughs> Shut up. Come on. You're not going to believe it. Okay, I had a gut-busting, stomach-wrenching, ridiculously intense, out-of-control orgasm, okay? And for at least three weeks afterwards... Every time I used the bathroom, I was having one. Like, not a Yay! refused one. Wow. Genuine orgasm. And I was freaking out because you know, I'm drinking all this water. I didn't know what was going on. And I just didn't know if any of y'all had, had that ever happen or... I don't know. Any of y'all had that happen? No, like I've had flashbacks? An, 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 no. uh, incredible <laughs> orgasm <laughs> throughout the night, but not while I was uh, going to the bathroom. Now I don't, don't remember that. I called my health plan about it, and the nurse told me not to bother them because people had serious problems, and I should just enjoy it. So. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Took, one time, I remember eating a lot of steak the night before, <laughs> and I took a really big dump, and it was almost as good as having an orgasm. Is that similar? <laughs> so, but were you reading the newspaper? Well, huh? <laughs> Were you reading the newspaper? I had the encyclopedia there. I mean, it was like <laughs> well, great. It was like Lincoln know, Logs. I want to know if this orgasm was different from others. Was did, was she having sex in a different way? Was, no, I mean, it, what it was I mean, different about this orgasm? I was on top, and my partner wasn't particularly someone I really that really turned me on. I mean, it wouldn't have matter if he was there or not. Really, it just happened. It was <laughs> really in my head that was really making me crazy. <laughs> so you tu- you tuned him out completely. Well, he helped. But you know, he helped. helped. Wow. Fun, wow. Really well, Julie and I need to come to your house right now. <laughs> he <laughs> helped. I asked the doctor about it, and they said if you get overstimulated sometimes, it's your body's way of like reacting, like aftershocks, like an earthquake. And this like, went on for weeks, a week? A long time. That's some good sex if she's having tremors for a week. It was very good, but oh well, Dang. you know. That's yeah. Well, it, all, it can also be experience it sometimes. It can also be associated with some kind of an infection or irritation. Uh. So, <laughs> yeah, anything good has to be some sort of infection. <laughs> Way to turn me off. <laughs> Infections. Now I'm worried. Well, it's probably nothing, but I mean, you, you, if it hurt, if it's any kind of burning or anything like that, and so no, it didn't. Burn. It was very pleasurable, and okay. I never thought I'd be having an orgasm in the same room as my boss because she was like in the stall next to me at work. 
but it was just really very strange. Did you did you bellow, Karen, or did you keep I was it just to yourself? Kind of whimpering in the stall, going, "Oh my goodness." But, you know. I'm envious. I mean, I think that orgasm sounds really hot. I, That's good. Yeah. What can I say? Probably never again, but, you know. Good luck. I hope it does. Yeah, really. Thank you. Let's talk to Mark from Santa Monica. Mark, you're on Loveline with Julie Ashton and Doria from hi, Playboy's Night Calls. Yeah, hi. How you doing? Oh, very good. Um, the question I have, I'm a big guy. I weigh 320 pounds. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I've got some friends who are gay that... Um, you know, and these, there's different fetish scenes and so on, and they're big guys, and there's these organizations out there for guys who like big guys. I was wondering if there's anything that you've heard of that out there, you know, women who like big guys and so on. You're straight. I'm actually, I'm bisexual. You're bisexual. Yes. Bisexual. Buy want... me something, I'll be sexual. Uh, that one. Well, in that case, most uh, women are so bisexual. The, the panties, huh? <laughs> so, Mark, you're a fat, big guy. Yeah. And you like women, and you want women that like big guys. Right. Because, interesting, Drew and I were on a talk show, The Other Side, and there was this, this fat woman on it, right? Uh, or wait, that's not the... the, the word. Large. What's, what's the politically correct word now? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, width challenged? <laughs> Vertically challenged. Uh, oh, that's tall people. Um <laughs> Horizontally challenged. Horizontally. horizontally <laughs> she was horizontally challenged. Food challenge. And there's this magazine, right? And it's called Dimensions. And it's for guys that dig big women. And well, maybe Dimensions also has one for, for chicks that like big guys. There is, there is a group called FAT. I mean, that's what the acronym is called. FAT? And what's it? Friends of all tubbos. No, it's not. It is, yes. <laughs> all right, I'm going to hell. What do you guys think of a big man? I mean, you know, it depends. All right. Uh, it, okay. Quit it being depends. kind. Quit, you no, want, I mean, I you think want it... Lorenzo Lamas, don't you? <laughs> yeah, right. Who is no. your version of the sexiest man in live right now? You want me to stand up? Antonio Banderas. Oh, what about you? <laughs> You're just um, going to say you don't even think about it. You think sexiest woman. <laughs> like, if you could have sex with anybody in the world, who would it be? Anybody in the world. Julie, um, you better say me. <laughs> All right. Man, man. Come on. Don't make me jealous. Don't make me jealous. Okay. Uh, other than people in this room, <laughs> Doria, I mean, <laughs> when we knew where that was going. If you could um, have sex with anybody in the world, who would it be? Uh, it's so hard. I don't know. It's so hard. Yeah. Exactly. What is so hard? What about you, Doria? Um, would it have been Johnny Depp? No, I, I like uh, Antonio. Oh, that's right. Rocks you my said world. That. You already said that. What about you? You don't have a favorite? No, I really don't. Okay. I mean, I, I like Mark, Mark basically, we can't help you. Lons has got a penis, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, here's, here's what I would say to Mark. I mean, he would be the, the consolation. Uh, I would say better to be a fat guy than a fat woman because I think women are a little more into the, into the mind and they're a little more forgiving aesthetically. Meaning you can be a fat guy who plays a harmonica real well and fronts a good band and get all the trim you need. There you have I think it. we know what we're talking about. You have a sense of humor. <laughs> sense of humor is good. Band. Sense right. of humor is really good. Yeah. If somebody makes well, me laugh, that, that excites me. Oh, totally. yeah. yeah. Yes. Want to hear yeah. some jokes? <laughs> sure. 1-800-LOVE-191 <laughs> is the number. Right now, we're going to go to uh, Sherry from West Hollywood. Sherry, you're on Loveline. Hey, hey what's Sherry. up, you guys? How are you? Oh, good. I just wanted to say the guys in Hawaii, I'm from Hawaii, are hot for you girls. They've got Playboy <laughs> Channel going on 24 Great. hours of the day, and they can't get enough. Yep. Oh. We're going to be on at 7 p.m., <laughs> Um, excuse me, 7 p.m. Pacific time, 10 p.m. East Coast time. That'd be 90 minutes. Hawaii. Really? 90 yeah, minutes I have live. The, I Julie have the Playboy and I. channel. That's Wednesday, January Wednesday, 15th. They will January. be watching that, definitely. Cool. Try and call. <laughs> and then the first and third Wednesday of every month after that. So cool. we'll be around. We'll be in your living rooms. So I have a question for um, Dr. Drew mm-hmm. and whoever is into surfing or date surfers. Um, I'm I'm wondering what the point is. Uh, this guy who's just dating in Hawaii gets stoned like every time he goes surfing, and I'm wondering what the point oh is of this God. because Sherry, um, what <laughs> this is the deal? Okay, <laughs> he's a surfer. He goes surfing every day. Surfers right. surf every day. Yeah. He's also a stoner. Stoners smoke dope every day. Hence, a surfer surfs, a stoner gets stoned. He just happens to be doing them both the same day. These are things he likes. But, Neither one has anything but, to do with but, the but other. People but how is he sexually? 
after all that uh, smoking and all that surfing, is is he's he hot. wore out? <laughs> he's hot, very Sh- very hot. Sherry, but... people smoke pot, smoke pot before they surf, before they have lunch, before they have dinner, before they go to bed at night. If they made a waterproof I, joint, I, he'd be doing it. Right, and... it just that's what happens. People smoke pot every day, smoke pot there's every a, day. There's a new uh, invention for you. Adam. He, here's the thing, guys. It would work. Is that that people that smoke pot every day? Uh, People who are marijuana addicted are always from an alcoholic family background. They always have the biochemistry of alcoholism. And they that population tends also to be, be thrill-seeking. So people that are into extreme activities, rock climbing, hang gliding, surfing, skydiving, tend to be from an alcoholic kind of biochemical makeup. And we've read recently in the newspapers and the lay press, they were talking about the thrill gene has been isolated. I said this before. I was a, yeah. I used to skydive, and most yeah. of the people that were skydiving were, were recovering uh, cokeheads. Uh, uh, co- but if the ones that are still not recovery, you'll see smoke a lot of pot. And they <laughs> Wait did. a minute. All the, all the, all the pot-smoking buddies I have just sit around and listen to Donovan. They don't do anything. They don't have any energy. By the, time they're, by the time they're your age, they that's no what energy. happens. But when, when they're in their early 20s, they, they, they're they still smoking a lot of pot. Yeah, Think about I it. I thought uh, surfing's supposed to be a natural high. I mean, right, well. Sherry, it's, again, it's people that tend to pursue thrill. The thrill gene we're gonna, you're going to hear about in the next few months probably is also tied to the addictive uh, biochemistry, the addictive genetic makeup. Yeah. And uh, that people who are alcoholic addicts are almost always thrill seekers. Now, as a result of the cumulative effects of the drugs they use, they may become rather uh, uh, sort of uh, passive and, and not interested in thrill seeking anymore. But uh, they too tend to go together. Because he right? totally describes it as a ritual, and I just—it's not a ritual. He's a mar- marijuana addict, and well, he's a sort of surfer. <clears throat> Ricky's right. Do you do you smoke pot with him? Do you? Not after, uh, not during surfing. The but thr- the thr- share the you don't smoke pot so- during surfing? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see that. <laughs> the threshold, share the threshold question I always ask people. The, the way to tell whether somebody is going to be a marijuana addict or not is pretty simple. If they have a, a parent or grandparent who's alcoholic, and if they really love pot the first time they are exposed to it, the first, they, people you have to sort of condition your brain to the high from pot. So the first few times you use it, people may actually experience nothing. But when you finally get high, people that are going to be marijuana addicts just love the experience, and they pursue it from then after. So, so And they're still like, bummed out about Jerry Garcia. There's, like, no way to really encourage him to stop tripping before he surfs. He's just it gonna- has nothing it's- to do with before surfing. He's a marijuana act that you can deal with that separately. we got to go to commercials. <laughs> what did you say? I was going to say, does he smoke dope in bed with her? <laughs> I'm sure he does. He, he, yeah, he, he smokes pot all the time. All the time. <laughs> hey, we got more of Julie Ashton and Doria from Playboy's Night Call. Love Line will be right back when we're damn good and ready. Ricky, what'd you do at work today? Oh, I talked to all these people on the on the phone. Julie, what'd you do at work today? I did my girlfriend with a strap on. Exactly. <laughs> See that? See that? We got uh, Julie Ashton and Doria from Playboy's Night Calls. It's a call-in show. We get girls and guys calling them up, but they get to see them. Be very glad you can't see us. This is Jimmy from Alexandra, Virginia. Jimmy, you're on Loveline. What's up? Hey, Jimmy. Hey. How you doing? Pretty good. I got a question for Julie. Okay. All right. If you're doing adult videos, uh-huh. what is like the whole deal with the safe sex? Um, a lot of people have their own standards. Uh, there is a lot of condoms being used in the industry. Um, I get tested every 30 days with a DNA test, uh-huh. and I require that anybody that I work with is also tested every 30 days. What do you do? Do you say, can I see your papers? Or? Yeah, exactly. And, and if they, they bring papers in? Yes. You now, have to Drew, carry... Drew, what is the DNA? how does the DNA thing work? It's a very accurate HIV, vi- actually a true viral test. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it true they have a TNA test? Too? <laughs> <laughs> do you feel safe that way, though? Um, Actually, I do, because uh, one of the things with me in the industry is that I don't work that much and I work with the same people over and over and the people that I'm working with I know them all and we're pretty much only having sex with each other the industry is having sex with the industry we don't go out and pick up at bars where do you get the DNA test done people have asked me that before and those are Um, hard to come by actually there's a great place down on Venice Boulevard called the 10 minute AIDS test it'll give you a 10 minute um, ELISA test and 
a five day deep and a happy meal toy. It's next to what three day you? blinds, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So. The ten minute aid test, Drew, is a ten minute aid test very accurate? Eliza, AIDS? that's for, for the antibody. If you if during an Eliza, well, wow. and, and you have to register, Are right? There... I mean, you have to register if you want to get into the adult film industry. Now, yeah. you have to have a test, you have right. to have your ID, uh-huh. and you have to register with with what uh, some with sanctioning agent. body with no, an... with an agent. Yeah. Well, I got one more question. Okay. Do you um, ever date any of the people that? Do you like screwing or? <laughs> um, actually, I personally don't. I like to keep my. She would never have dinner with somebody that she blows. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what kind of girly thing she is. <laughs> no, I like to keep my work separate because then once you break up and then you have to be on a set with them, that's pretty tough. So I keep it separate. Yeah, you'd have to sleep with somebody you don't like. Exactly. Have you ever slept with people that you don't like? Um, yeah. Really? Yeah. Is it a drag? Um. Is it a woman or a man? Who? Well, Who'd you sleep with that you didn't like? <laughs> no, see, the thing with me is that um, I can personally find something attractive about anybody. I had sex with a 300-pound woman. And you did? It, yeah. And everybody said, God, what was so? that like? And I said, so? well, you know, she had the most incredible nipples I've ever seen in my mm. life. What movie is that? <laughs> what movie is so, did you have sex with a 300-pound woman? The man with two heads. <laughs> <laughs> Rosie did you ever have sex with Ray Milan? So... I mean, those are the kind of things that we want to talk about on our show is that sexuality is normal. And sure, there's some things that are abnormal in sexuality, but not to be turned off by some of the things you're thinking. And So when life gives you lemons, make you, you make big nipples. <laughs> so let me ask you, Doria, what are some of the biggest mistakes that guys make when it's making love to a woman? Uh, by not wanting to give oral sex to a woman. That, right. to me, is a big thing. It's yes. like, right. And, 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 and let's, right. let's describe oral sex, I mean, done properly. I mean, we, we don't have to get too graphic. Yeah, we do. Well, yeah. I'm trying to make her feel oh, comfortable. But no, no, no. Real quick, just uh, give guys a couple, or girls, a couple basic tips. Just rules of thumb. Receiving... No giving. We're we giving. know how to receive it. We know how to get a blowjob. <laughs> Pass out the beer in your hand we, and the TV remote how. in the other. We know how. Um, just yeah. fingers, starting with the fingers. Uh-huh. You know, sensuality, touching, touching everywhere. Right. Even yourself sometimes I'll do oh, that. Sure. A handle mm-hmm. strike. So we get Don't hot and excited. <laughs> hot and excited and just really exploring. Right, and right. Being gentle with the tongue at first and right. then maybe getting a little... Harder, right, and a little faster, variety. As yeah. if it was a penis. And then she's thinking, yeah, she's going to get the penis. What if afterwards. my tongue's bigger? <laughs> well, then you can stay down there forever and forget the penis. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that helped anybody with that, anything. That's a bad sign if you pull the tongue out and it's a little disappointment when the penis moves <laughs> in. like, here it comes. Okay, now you had the big one. Send your well, big brother you back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk to Candace from, uh, no, no, we'll talk to Julie from Baltimore. Julie, you're on Loveline. Hey, Julie. How are you? Fine. How are you doing tonight? Okay. I have a little problem. Oh, okay. no. Let's I hear it. I my husband in bed with my roommate. Mm. Did you what, join in? Who's your roommate? What, His name's James. Oh, it's a guy? Oh. You caught your, oh. your husband doing a guy? Yes. What was he doing? Was he giving or receiving? What difference does it make? It matters a lot. <laughs> they were doing both. They were like, Julie, were they wait, butt Julie, slamming or Come on. What difference does that make? Hey, I mean, hey Drew, it makes it's a big difference. We're painting a story. What? They were doing it everywhere. Butt slamming and pipe smoking? Julie, what, what did you do? Threw up. I videotaped it. Uh, I was just going to ask you that if you videotaped it. Minute, I was just going to ask that. Wait a minute. You're saying that's not healthy, I Drew? Deny it. What? Because I knew they were denying it. So you knew this was going on? I had my suspicions. You, you, For so how long? You, For a while. Did you, at least about a month and a half. A month and a half? And, and, and did you ever say to him point blank, are you gay or are you bisexual? Are you having sex with our roommate? I've said to them, but they denied, you know. All right, wait a minute. Yeah. Hold on. Hold the phone, everyone. Let's get to the videotaping part. Did you <laughs> hide it in the toaster, or what'd you do? I hid it in the closet. And, and oh. so you taped, you taped them. up the red light, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, of course. Not that I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you hid, you hid it, and you taped it. Yes. And did you show it to him when he denied it? When I confronted him and told him I know what they're doing. And what happened? They just... They were just, you know... They're he like, started masturbating. Oh. And they what? They what? They were caught. And what, what did they do? They didn't deny it anymore. And what happened? Well, you can't deny it. You seem smoking a pipe. Describe the circumstances. Hey, that's not my ass. Wait, what happened? 
How did they react? They just they were just in awe, you know. And so what happened? So I turned around and I told them. I said, "Well, what's the deal?" And what did they say? And they said they loved each other. And so wow. what happened? So. And what did I you do? I turned around and I started going out with a 16-year-old boy. No, well, I'll show him. No, wait, Julie. Wait there a minute. you go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. When they said they were loving each other, what, what, wait, what did you do? What did I do? What did you do? I watched it first and got off on it. No, I don't, I don't buy it. You're a freak. What? I don't buy it. This. Oh, you I do. You think she... No. Either that or this, she needs to be institutionalized. I mean, that's just... <laughs> I'll buy that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Girls, you're buying it. Wait you? a minute. So if, if Julie no. and I... Uh... <laughs> no, it's just, it's just it, 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 right. right, exactly. Right. I mean, you don't you don't find your husband with anybody and go and you know it's just because she he's cheating, he's cheating. There, there was mm-hmm. no emotional content to anything that she said there, and she because she was trying to make it up as she went along. Yeah, so. but wasn't she from Virginia, Baltimore? Well, there you go. <laughs> Love line will be right back to say something interesting or humorous or something. Yeah, you find me a show that starts off with Space Ghost in the midst with Ricky Rackman, Dr. Drew, and Adam Carolla, ends with Julie Ashton and Doria from Night Calls. Which can be seen on the Playboy channel. Playboy Play TV. TV. Playboy TV. No more Playboy channel. Why? It's Playboy TV. It's Playboy TV because it's 24 hours a day now. Oh, it is. It is. Oh, now. thank God. You know, <laughs> it's I almost about had. about time, isn't it? No, yeah, because. Cause, cause <laughs> now you'll So now you have Playboy TV in the morning, too. Oh, that's great. The morning I, I gotta, after. I'm going to be late for <laughs> work every morning. Adam's, <laughs> Adam's going to get to work Just out. Just in case in the you're a morning too. person. <laughs> Tony from La Crescenta, you're on Loveline. Hey, how you doing? Hey. Hey. How are you? Uh, not doing too bad. Um, I was wondering, they, I've had friends that have been in the business as far as, like, you know, fluff girls. Uh-huh. And, um, I heard there was no such thing as fluff not girls. Not anymore. Fluff well, girls. not anymore. Uh, For people that don't know what a fluff girl is, tell them, Tony. Um, girls that uh, get the gentlemen prepared for scenes. Yeah. You used to do that, right? Mm, no, I wish. <laughs> uh, to, get, to get girls ready. Yeah, right? right, yeah. And uh, I was wondering, there's no, really no call for that anymore, is there? No. Not okay. at all. No, it's all mechanized now. Uh, they have a fluff o matic You just insert your <laughs> penis into the scholar hole. It's horrible. It's Orwellian. It's, it's, but it's the future, and that's the way it's going, unfortunately. A lot of fluff girls out Technology. on the street now. Out of work. And the, and the, and the day that, and Unemployed. The, right. The old Hoovers are back in... That's right. Um, yeah, I was just wondering, because I've... And I've... You, you, you've well, got a great the, gift uh, to gab, Tony. Cop- <laughs> huh? Yeah. <laughs> I've been complimented a lot on my oral capabilities and was just wondering. Oh, really? Let's hear about it. Um, I just enjoy it, you know, the old saying. The oral capabilities they were talking which... about wasn't your talking, right? Mm, correctly. Yeah. You yeah. figure he's got to do something good with his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> gift the gab ain't one of them. Uh, what about fi- now for yeah. films? Can anybody, where can people see some of the titles that you are uh, got, Julie? That in their living uh, room. I'm like the other guy. <laughs> I'm under contract with VCA, which is the largest adult video company. And 300 pound woman. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, some of my bigger titles: Devil and Miss Jones Part Five. Because um, I was always wondering when they were going to make the sequel from that. Yeah, there's yeah. five of them. Exactly. I'm one of the Miss Joneses. Um, let's see. Everyone has a fantasy part three. I'm really big on sequels, so. Um, just look for VCA product and you'll see me. And Dory never done any adult films. No. But would. Oh, sure. I mean, I'm in a coach or <laughs> Yeah. Really? Uh, let's go to Nick from Baltimore. Nick, you're on Loveline. Last call of the night. Hey, how's it going? Hey. Hey, Nick. Um, I had a question, uh, I don't know, uh, about advice. Um, what I should do about my girlfriend. We had broken up a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And, um. We've been spending a lot of time together, and a couple weeks ago, I found out she had slept with some other guy, mm-hmm. and she says she wants to get back together, but she hasn't uh, given that other guy the shaft yet. I don't know what I should do. Has this ever happened to you girls, Doria? 
this happen? Well, yeah. I mean, it well happens all the time, unfortunately. But um, do you you want to get back with her? Yeah, I, I, I have some pretty strong feelings about her. You're so you're in love with her, and you want to be with yeah. her. Basically. I think he wants to get back there so he can make her pay for screwing around <laughs> on it. If I know get, guys. Get back to her, get back with her so you can so, so you can, can get rid of her. her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and she's not getting rid of this guy, Nick. Yeah, not yet, so she says. You glutton for punishment. You just want to make yourself feel like hell, don't you? Yeah, I dude, mean. Dude, 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 let I, me see. Close your eyes right now. Close your eyes, Nick. Close right. them. Your eyes closed? Yeah. Picture her. Touching tongues with another guy. How does that make you feel? How does that make you feel? Are you, you, you cool Tongue. with that? No, not really. You cool so, with that knowing that right now she's laying on her back with another guy on top of her? You cool with that? No, not at all. Forget so it, you, okay? <laughs> Get the hell out. If you're okay with her seeing other guys, then stay with her. If you want to just punish yourself, make yourself feel like hell, stay with her. Otherwise, get over it. You'll hurt for a while, but you will get over it. Time heals all wounds. Go out, find right. another girl. It's done. All right. Bye, and, and by the way, watch our show. <laughs> what? We got to go. Uh, we oh, want to thank you girls real. for being guests on Loveline. Please thank stop by you. whenever. Real quick, watch them on Playboy TV. Uh, ah. It's Julie, Ashton, and Doria. Yeah. If you want to send an email to Loveline, you can at LUV191 at America Online. If you want to send it to me at RIKIR at America Online. Who do we have as our guest tomorrow night? Nobody. Good. We'll be here tomorrow. Thanks for being a part of Bye-bye. tonight's Bye. Bye. Have been listening to Loveline. The opinions expressed by Ricky Rackman, Dr. Drew, Adam Carolla, or anybody else on this program are not necessarily anyone's. Loveline producer Ann Wilkins.